Welcome back to all you gear hearts out there. This is part three of our four part series on building this functional geared heart pendant in SOLIDWORKS. Up to this point, we've built the gear functionality into the design and we've created a little window into the inner workings of our heart. In this part of the series, let's build some functionality into the back side of the parts to make this a unique reversible design. We're going to cut some custom text into the back side of the large gear, but first we need to cut away a few windows through the base of the enclosure. I want the wearer to be able to expose a few different messages by turning the gears, so I'll design the windows accordingly. Let's sketch on the back face of the enclosure and relate these sketches to the edges of the large gear. We don't want our text cut too close to the edge of the gear, so let's offset the window 40 thousandths of an inch from the edge of the gear, and we will make our window 0.16 inches tall. Now let's add in the other two edges to this bottom window and set a horizontal relationship between these two points to make sure the window stays symmetrical. Let's use the Offset Entities tool to start creating our top window. This top window will lie 10 thousandths of an inch inside the inner diameter of the bottom window, so the wearer can expose two different messages by turning the gear in 180 degree increments. This window will be the same height as the bottom window, and we'll draw in our outer edges as we did the bottom window. Use the Trim Entities tool to trim away the unneeded portions of the sketch. And let's soften the corners with a 0.04 inch fillet. Finally, we'll use an angle dimension to set the width of our windows. Let's exit the sketch and use the extruded cut tool to cut through all, ensuring the feature scope includes only the enclosure base. Now let's add some chamfer detail to the cutouts on both halves of the enclosure. In the dropdown under the fillet feature, you'll find the chamfer tool. Let's set a 0.04 inch chamfer at 30 degrees on these back windows. And we'll go a little bit smaller to 20 thousandths of an inch at the same angle for the front chamfers. Now that the back of our large gear is exposed, we can add in some custom text. But before we do this, I realize I missed adding the loop to the top of the pendant. I want the loop to be attached to only the base of the enclosure, so I need to make sure the bottom portion of the loop is cut away just as we cut away the bottom of the teeth detail in part two of this series. So I'm going to back up on the history tree to the point before making that cut. Once I add the loop to the enclosure base, it will automatically become part of the cut operation. To construct the loop, let's draw a sketch on the right plane for a simple revolve. We'll dimension the thickness of the loop to 80 thousandths of an inch, and set a dimension to a sketched center line for the ID of the loop. Now let's set the bottom of the loop coincident with the bottom of the cleft of the heart. Exit the sketch and click on the revolved boss tool to revolve this sketch around its center line. Again, ensure you select the appropriate body that you want this feature to merge with, in this case, the base of the enclosure. As you can see, when we pull our history tree back down, the loop becomes part of the later operations as we wanted.
Now we're ready to lay out the text in these curved windows. I'm looking for a typewriter style font and I'm not happy with the options currently loaded on my PC. So let's run through how to find and install unique fonts. There are several websites out there for downloading fonts, but I've navigated to my favorite. I'm going to search typewriter fonts. Keep in mind when downloading fonts, some are 100% free for personal or commercial use, but some ask for a donation or even require a licensing fee to be paid to the artist for commercial use. In this case, I'm going to filter my search to only include 100% free fonts. I like the look of this second font. When using font for extruded cuts or bosses, you want to make sure you choose a friendly font. Look for a type that has a fairly uniform line weight and are a solid type style. Complex or worn looking fonts, such as the first option shown in this search, look great on paper, but don't translate well into the 3D world. So keep it simple at first before experimenting with more complex fonts. I'm going to download the Another Typewriter font, which saves as a zipped folder. Right click on the folder and select Extract All to extract the contents of the folder. Double click the True Type font file and select Install at the top of the window. You can do this with SolidWorks still running in the background and the newly loaded font will take effect as an option. Let's lay out our first text sketch on the back of the gear. Before selecting the text tool, we need to create a few reference lines that we want our text to follow. So let's create a few construction arcs offset 0.01 inches from the bottom of our windows. Select the text tool, which is designated by the capital A in the command manager. Select the line or curve you want the text to follow. Type in your text and orient it accordingly. In this case, we want it centered in the window. The font style defaults to the font you have set in document settings, but you can deselect use document font and select a new font. Here we can search for our newly downloaded font and alter its style and font size in either units or point size. You also have control over the character width and the spacing between characters. Now let's repeat the operation for the text we want in the bottom window. This text can now be used to create the extruded cut in the back of the gear. Let's create an extruded cut 15 thousandths of an inch deep. Now that the first message is complete, let's rotate the gear 180 degrees to expose a blank slate for another message. Select the Move Copy Bodies tool in the Command Manager, and in the Rotate option, we want to rotate this gear around the origin's z-axis 180 degrees. Now just follow the exact same steps as you did for the first message to create the second custom message. and create an extruded cut to the same depth as the first message at 15 thousandths of an inch. We now have our completed design. In the final part of this series, we will show you how to take these components into an assembly file to help visualize its functionality. Stay tuned.